Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm Duran with DuranSupply.com, where I help you design smarter, not harder. This modulated CRT effect is one of the most sought after looks in the design community, but not everyone wants to go out and buy an old CRT TV and a bunch of adapters. I did that and I actually got the wrong adapter, but I thought it was the TV that was cooked. So I just ended up donating it. Biggest mistake of my life right next to opening up Photoshop for the first time. But in any case, we're actually able to get this effect done right inside of Photoshop. Let's check it out. So we're gonna be using my new action set, CRT Phaser. I just released this product on my website today. I'm so excited to see what you guys create with this. Also, make sure you stick to the end for a discount code. But you may remember I had a product on my store called the CRT Modulator, and this is not an update to that product. This is actually an entirely new product. And I took CRT Modulator off of my store because it pales in comparison to this new product. So let's go through the motions here. It's actually very straightforward. Obviously, you're gonna need to install all the actions before anything. So please refer to the included installation guide in the download to do that. Once you've got the actions installed, you see we have quite a few here. This is what it should look like. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is be working in a high resolution document. I recommend any DPI above 144 and a pixel size above 2000 by 2000 pixels. I'm of course gonna be using the document size I always use, which is 16 by 20 inches at 300 DPI. Cool, so now all I'm gonna do is drag my photo of choice into this document and we can choose from any of these CRT phaser preset actions to get that cool CRT effect on our image. As for what each of them does, I've included a little visual guide within the product booklet, which is included in the download. So let's take a look at that real quick. So this is the effect reference page and you can see here what each of these actions do. I've also explained a little bit about the actions up here. So pretty simple actions that are tagged with macro in the title, just have a bigger effect than the actions tagged with micro. And there's also a bunch of experimental effects that you can play around with to get different experimental effects on that CRT look. So there's a emboss effect, which sort of gives it that old VHS look. There's a gridded effect, which is pretty self-explanatory. I actually have that in the usage guide here. So this is what the gridded effect looks like. And then there's stochastic and stagger, which are some other ones which I explain in the guide right here. But either way, let's just get right into this. We're gonna start simple. I'm gonna choose my favorite action of them all, which is the macro waveform phase up here. I'm just gonna select that action and click play while having the layer that I want this effect on selected. So go ahead and click play here. So this is the first dialogue that's gonna pop up is a threshold dialogue. You're just gonna wanna adjust this value so you can see the subject of your image pretty well. I'm gonna go for around 30 here. Press okay. And now the second dialogue that pops up is going to prompt you to save a displacement map onto your PC somewhere. I recommend you just do what I do and create a dump folder for all these displacement files that you'll be saving. So this should just be a temporary location to save this file. So just go ahead and save that anywhere on your computer. Click on save. Now the next step is going to prompt you with a displacement dialog. Just click OK here and choose the displacement map that we just saved and click on open. And now the effect is pretty much gonna be done for you. You just have to wait obviously for all the steps uh, to run through in the action. All right, cool, look at that. This is the result of running the macro waveform action. By default, the color of the CRT effect is going to be based on the original color of the image. So since this image is black and white, the CRT effect is obviously going to be in black and white, but we can change that pretty easily by opening up the macro waveform folder that it generated for us and just turning on the color slash saturation adjustment layer right here. And that's gonna colorize this into a glowy blue. We can also just change the hue in the properties panel here to whatever we want. You also might notice that you have these lines sort of peeking out of the original image that you generated your effect on. And this will just happen if your image isn't taking up the whole canvas. So all you have to do really is just hide this dots layer or mask it to the sides of the original image. So I can just go ahead, press command and click on this layer thumbnail and make a layer mask on this dots layer if I don't want those peeking out the edges of the image. To explain a little bit about these layers, this dots layer is actually just a complementary effect on the CRT look here. So you see these dots sort of peeking out the glow. It looks really nice. It just contributes to that digital aesthetic. You can see how this looks with the dots off and on. I personally really like the dots effect on this. Then we have the actual effect layer. And from here, you can sort of mess with the glow a little bit and actually open up the smart object and mess a little bit with the parameters of the effect. I'll show you that in just a second here. But if you wanna quickly mess with the glow on this, you can just simply open up the layer styles of this layer and mess with the outer glow possibly turn the size down or the opacity down, whatever you want really. Now, if you open up the smart object of the effect by double clicking on the layer thumbnail, we can actually change the size of these lines a bit. I'm gonna add a black background in here just so we can see that better. But of course, once you're done, you're gonna wanna delete this black background layer. This is just for visual aid so we can see how thick or thin the lines are getting. But basically, you're just gonna wanna double click on the maximum filter of this layer here. So we'll go ahead and double click that. 
and the higher you set this radius, the more thick the lines are gonna be. So say if I set this to five pixels, that is going to really thicken up these lines. We'll press okay on that and let the effects render on top of this. And now all we have to do is save this smart object using Command S on our keyboard or file save. And that's gonna update it in the original document here. Boom, look at that. Now the lines are a lot bigger. Of course, that kind of mess with everything else, like the glow and the whole color of this really. So you can mess with the exposure layer up here to sort of dial that down. So that's sort of a quick and easy way to affect the scale of the lines of the CRT effect. But if you really want full control over the size of the lines here, you want to run this custom waveform phase action down here, which lets you choose the size of the effect more aptly. And I'll go through that later. But just to show you what that looks like, again, we're back on the effect reference page. So this would be the macro waveform phase action that we just ran the default size one. And this is using the custom waveform action where I set the line size to be a little bit bigger. So you can obviously get some really cool effects just by varying the line size and by using the custom waveform phase action here. Again, I'm gonna go through that in just a second here. But first, I wanna show you what these other default actions do. So I'm only gonna be running the macro size actions here. This is just where the effect is larger and it's easier for you to see. And I don't trust YouTube to not compress the absolute shit out of this video. But again, the micro actions just generate a smaller size effect onto your image. So let's check out the macro linear phase action. This is gonna generate a more linear CRT look without all the bending and wavy stuff going on in the macro waveform action. So let's go ahead and check out what this macro linear phase action does. We'll go ahead and click play on that. Again, we're prompted with the threshold value. I'm gonna go ahead and set that to around 40, 30. Press okay here. And that's actually the only dialogue that you're gonna be prompted with for the linear phase action. So there's no need to save a displacement map or anything when you're using the linear actions. Here we have the result of that looking pretty damn cool. As you can see, it's quite a different look from the waveform action. And it's it's in the name really, waveform versus linear. So you kind of get the gist here. And again, we can open up this effect layer to mess with the glow or the size of the lines. So this whole effect is pretty modular and non-destructive. These are all smart objects. So you can go ahead and mess with any of the filters or the layer styles on any of these layers here. Okay, so there's obviously a ton of options here for you guys to play with. There's a ton of different actions that you can run for different effects on your images. Just for you to know, the macro flux phase action is just a variant of the waveform phase action. It's just a little bit more distorted and has some more glitchy artifacts within the effect. Again, just check out the usage guide and the effect reference page for your convenience to see what all of these different actions do to your image. I do, however, want to go over these custom actions here in the bottom of the action set because this is really where the magic happens. So we're going to go ahead and run the waveform phase custom size action here. Go ahead and click that and just click on play. There's some guides here to run you through it, but if you're watching this tutorial, I'm sure you're gonna get the idea. The first prompt here is going to let you choose the size of the lines. This is done within filter gallery. So by default, the size is five. If you want a smaller line, obviously you go down on the size, bigger line, you go up. I like using somewhere around eight. It gets us a really cool effect. So I'll dial that in there and just press okay on this. And now you're gonna be prompted with a threshold dialog to further choose and dial in thickness of the lines here. So just run this slider across wherever you want and find whatever thickness works for you. I'm gonna go around maybe 115 here, press okay. Now again, we're prompted with another threshold dialog. This is the same as before. We're just gonna choose a number that lets us see the subject of our image very clearly. And now you're gonna be prompted with a blur dialog. So the number you input here is gonna let you choose the softness or the harshness of the distortion of the waves in the lines of that final CRT effect. So the higher you put this number, the more soft the distortion and the waves are gonna be on the final effect. And the lower you put it, the more harsh and linear those lines are gonna be. So I like putting it up around 60 or 80. We'll just go in the middle at 70 here and click okay. Keep in mind also the more blurry you make that displacement map, the less detail you're gonna have on that final effect in exchange for more of a softer and wavy displacement along the edges and contours of your image. Now again, we're prompted to save this displacement map. So we're just gonna click okay and save that wherever we want on our PC. Next up, we're hit with the displacement map dialog. The only thing you're gonna wanna change here is the horizontal scale. The lower you put this number, the less the effect is going to bend to the contours of your image. And the higher you put this number, the more the CRT lines and effect is going to bend along the contours of your image. So I recommend going anywhere from 80 to 140 for more of a displaced and bended look. I'm gonna go around 120 here, press okay on that. And again, we're gonna choose that displacement file with that displacement map that we just saved. Click on open and boom, look at that. So now we have these very, very thick and distorted lines going across our image. I obviously blew this out quite a bit to show you just how interesting of an effect you can get just by messing with some of the parameters along the way, like the size of the lines or the blurriness of the displacement map. So that is why I included these custom actions in here to let you get more of a stylized effect 
to your liking. Again, we're able to change the color and all and whatever we want really within the adjustment layers of this effect. As you can see, this looks absolutely fantastic. And that's just with the raw actions on our image. We didn't do any editing to our image before using these actions or any editing after. So now I wanna go over some things you can do to improve the final results of the effect. So this is a sample design I made using this new product, CRT Phaser. I'm gonna go through the layers here and show you what you can do to improve this effect on top of the preset actions that we have here. So this was my starting image down here. I then pretty much pre-composed this image with some cool sci-fi overlays, like these HUD overlays and these dots right here. And then I just layer mask some of these out to interplay with the subject of our image. I just found these HUD elements right here from Google. That's why they're pretty low quality, but I'm actually coming out with a pack of over 50 really, really cool and unique sci-fi HUD elements to use in your designs, specifically with these CRT phaser actions to help you really get into that sci-fi cyber aesthetic. So then I just merged all of this and I ran the macro waveform action and this was the result. Pretty cool already, but I wanna show you how I got from this to this. So I'm just gonna go through all of the layers that I have in here. So this was the original result, which is really cool already, as you can see. I did want some more glow on this though. So I actually ran my film glow actions on this. That's my distorted film glow actions right here which are actually free on my website. So go to durantopi.com, just sign up for the mailing list at the bottom of the site. You'll get these free film glow actions sent to your email. So this is what it looked like with my glow actions applied to the effect here. Really, really nice soft glow. And it even has this sort of green tint coming off the edges here, which just gives it a beautiful color variance. Next up, I added this sort of motion blur on her face, which I masked to just this part of her face because I thought it was really cool to have her kind of fading away into the abyss here. So this is actually just the effects color layer that is generated by default when you run any of the CRT phaser actions. I just brought it all the way on top and increased that motion blur quite a bit to a very high amount so that we get this extremely exaggerated effect. And then I just set that layer to screen and layer mask that onto this part of her face. Here's what it would look like if I didn't layer mask it at all, which is also a really cool effect. So if you want this real cool and unique motion blur effect around your artwork here, just drag that FX color all the way on top of the original layers that are generated, go into the smart filters and just crank up that motion blur a whole lot and go ahead and set that layer to screen and that'll get you this cool blur on top of your image. Next up, I just had some simple adjustment layers here to mess with the color and brightness a bit. So I had a hue saturation adjustment just to turn this more of a deep blue and a levels adjustment to bring some brightness back into those highlights. And I've also got two selective color adjustments right here to blow out those midtones and make the whole image a bit brighter. And I also have this exposure adjustment layer masked to a few parts around the effect just to brighten up the glow in that area. And this is a fun thing you can do. So I'll delete this layer mask right here and I just have this exposure cranked up to plus two. And then you just put a layer mask on this, make it black with command I, and start painting in with a soft brush wherever you want that glow to be really pronounced. Cool. And then on top of that, I have some chromatic aberration going on. So this is how I like to do my chromatic aberration. All I did was merge everything that's below this layer. So that's the entire macro waveform effect here. I just merged that all into one layer. Then you go into the layer styles of that layer and just check off one of these channels. I checked off the blue channel and that's gonna isolate just the red and green channels, which is gonna get us this blue and green sort of uh, chromatic aberration effect once we take this layer and just start moving it around. I layer mask this to just this part of her head. But obviously you could do this on the whole image if you'd like and just have that chromatic aberration all over your image. And then lastly, I've just got some textures on top of all this to really bring that effect together. So first up, we have this grain texture set to multiply to sort of darken and grunge up those highlights a bit. I also have this cool sort of chromatic lens flare, which I found on Google somewhere. I think it was from Adobe Stock. So I just have that in here set to screen, which gives us these pretty cool RGB lens flares. And on top of that, I have a, another texture set to screen, which is just sort of a blue bag glow that is coming from the top of the document and pretty much shining down onto her face, which just gives this whole thing some more depth and color. On top of that, I've got a very slight film grain slash noise texture, super, super slight, just to lift those blacks a bit so they're not pure black. And then finally, on top of all that, I have a chromatic grain set to overlay, and that's just a must. As you know, I love my grain and I love my noise, so I had to add that on top of this image, and I recommend you do it too, because it's a really nice complement to the effect. So this is just a gray layer with some noise on it, can make that pretty easily by making a new layer, doing shift backspace on your keyboard, filling that with 50% gray, then going up to filter, noise, add noise, and make sure you have monochromatic unchecked because we want that cool RGB noise on our design. This noise by default is gonna be a little bit too harsh, so we can go up to filter, 
blur box blur and just blur this by one pixel and then set that to overlay and that's going to get that noise all nice and mushy within the crt effect okay cool so that's the final result that is how we took an image like this to something like this using the power of my new product crt phaser and that's a wrap if you want to download this product i just dropped it on my store at duronsupply.com thank you for sticking to the end you can use the code youtube 15 for 15 percent off of your order i'm really excited about this one guys and i can't wait to see what you make with it give this video a like if you're a fan of this effect and subscribe for more videos just like this i'll see y'all in the next one peace out